Joshua Schaub is joining us. He is the commissioner of the American Association of Professional Baseball. We are very familiar with uh, some teams in this league, whether it is the Milwaukee Milkmen, which I, I do remember that was uh, there was a lot of excitement when they first came. And I think that excitement has not only stayed, but gotten stronger in our area. Also, the Lake Country Dockhounds have come along. They make up what is uh, a 12-team league, I believe, at this point, and uh, talking with the commissioner of that league right now. Good to talk to you again. Um, league going strong. I think we were just discussing when the last time we spoke was, and it might have been during the pandemic when uh, your league was still in its infancy but also trying to power through. Um, I think a lot of the conversation was, how are you going to you know, pull it off? I think I hung up the phone with you and off air said, Oh, that league's screwed. No, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> <laughs> well, you pulled it off, and four years later, I think it's it's really found its footing, a lot of different things. So in your run as this commissioner, what has just been like the, – obviously, that's got to be the toughest challenge, but what has been the maybe most rewarding part of overseeing this league as you've been doing so now? I think just in general. So I've been the commissioner since March of 2019. So I was first met with three days on the job, uh, Milwaukee Stadium not being open on time. So it was like yep. three days in, they're like, hey, we need an, a second site. It's like uh, Oakland going to Sacramento or somewhere. The A's like, how are we going to logistically do this? And then the pandemic hit, obviously, the next spring as I'm like launching into our strategy of like how <laughs> we're going to grow this league. So, yeah, that that was same, that that being the same challenge is this like biggest like reward is getting through that pandemic season, which really has been a whipsaw for us because we were the only things going at the time that people could watch live sports in person. We were the only professional leagues to pull it off. So I think that's been kind of a catapult for us going forward. I think just in general, the progress we've made as a league in five years. And in fact, an article just came out in sports business journal today about our national television deals. And if you look back to 2019 when I took over, and this is not to besmirch my predecessor, who's a legend in the baseball industry, but our games were being broadcast on an obscure platform in Canada. You know, like there, there were no games. Now, in five years, and much credit to the teams, we're on national television. So that ascendancy has been awesome to watch, very rewarding. And it shows there's a great appetite for MLB Partner League Baseball outside of Major League Baseball, that there's – um, an appetite for more baseball. So it's, it speaks to the baseball industry as a whole. Yeah, I talk a lot about this with Major League Baseball, um, you know, and things that they could improve on. I think um, they do a bad job of the schedule. I mean, during – there's some holidays. Every team should be playing um, when you're thinking baseball. And so maybe if there's not a game in the area uh, from Major League, maybe – then they see the eyeballs there. Or if it's a, a bunch of other leagues, like there's leagues all over this country. There's a bunch of different partner leagues. Uh, the Northwoods League with the college amateurs we're familiar with around here too. I think that one thing that I always say in this discussion is, because, you know, baseball has been talked as, as a regional sport. I, I push back on that because it's not. It's, it's like, it's a very national sport. I think what happens at the top level with major league baseball is people get so sucked into their one team that sure in major league baseball, it's hard to care about the other 29 teams. There's going to be people watching the all-star game this week. And they don't know a lot of these players because you just don't see them because you're so invested with your team. But I think that you look around the country and there are a lot of different pockets. We'll call this a Midwestern pocket pocket of baseball that, yeah, you can assemble a league. You can put teams out. You can say, hey, you know, if you're in Milwaukee and you like the Brewers, well, there's also the Milkmen. Or if you don't want to get into Milwaukee, you know, some days there's the Dock Hounds. Like there's all these different leagues. And I think you guys take advantage of there is an appetite for baseball is what I'm saying, despite people pretending like it's not what it used to be. No, and, and part of what you just described is the nature of our game that we play every day. So there's so much content. It's hard to keep up with all the content. Yeah. Your team's on every day, so you don't have an opportunity to breathe and even watch the Fox Sports Sunday night game to watch the big stars. It's very difficult to consume all that content. That being said, what you just described is two different products. You have Major League Baseball, which is clearly the best players in the world. We never contend that our players are better than what they have. But what we have is a product that's local, that you can visit in person at an affordable price and still have access to heroes. And make no doubt about it, our players are still phenomenal athletes. They're players that 
uh, 68% of our players have made it to double A or above. We had opening day this year, 25 players that had major league baseball service time. So to see those players live, they still feel like big leaguers, but the fact is the big leaguers play on a grander stage, which makes them feel grander, but we still have phenomenal athletes playing in our league. And the bigger thing is you have access to them. So the autograph signings being closer to them, the home runs are just as far. In fact, I, I, I give this all the time. If you go to show up at our ballpark at five o'clock and you're watching BP, you wouldn't notice the difference between the two products. It's just when yeah. the lights are on in a bigger stage, you can, it's, you know, feels a lot different, but there's a lot of great things about our product that MLB can't offer either. That's the reality. Yeah. And I think of that more, um, you know, being a dad, uh, got a kid mm -hmm. who's going to turn five soon. And I'm not like, I've always said like, if he doesn't like sports, you know, that's fine. But I'm also, <laughs> I'm also like going yeah. to, I'm, I'm putting the dick game on in front of yeah. him and I'm, and I'm going uh, you know, to baseball games and just in trying to go, uh, you know, two games, I, I want something for him. Cause he's, you know, I, these are still formative years. Um, so I don't know what he's going to remember, but I want something that if he goes for, you know, half of the game or if he goes for the whole game, I want him close. I want him to be able to see what baseball looks like at a mm -hmm. professional level. And I think that this is another, you know, great league to do that. But then I, you know, I'm, I'm taking the dad route, but also like, just in talking to people uh, the last time I was at a Milkman game, there's people that, you know, don't have kids that just like going consistently. Like they like our team, but we don't want to watch. We, we want to be there. We want to be there every day and still have it be affordable. So I would, you know, think that, yes, the kid angle, the family angle, that is a tremendous angle that you guys would use. But I don't want to also just say like, you know, it's, it's, it's not Disney Junior. This is real baseball. Good for fans of any age. Yeah, I'd say what you described as the access is different too. The process of going to American Family Field, finding parking, walking all the way in, and like getting the concession stand, 20 minute walk to find whatever, like just the access is simpler and more efficient. And you don't spend so much that you have to like feel bad about leaving if you have to leave. Not that I encourage that, but you know, just the lift I do. for a family. <laughs> as a dad, I, I do. If you got to leave, you got to leave. I have to share this anecdote I saw online the other day. They said, um, I came into my own as a dad and believed I was a good dad when my child described a dinner without a main course as a bullpen dinner. So they had like all that's the signs. Yeah, that's you know, it's that's, so good. That's such a good tweet. He blew up. Such a good tweet. I saw that tweet right away because uh, I know JR. But yeah. I, that's one of those tweets where you're like, oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know it's going to get pick up steam. I didn't yeah. realize, you know, he, that, yeah, I'm glad that tweet got referenced. That's a, that is a so, good tweet. So not to digress too far, but baseball is baseball, whether it's major league baseball, American association, but our product is a little more efficient and better suited maybe for certain families that can't go to a major league baseball game multiple times a year, but you want to go to a professional baseball game multiple times a year. That's us. That's where yeah. we're at. The five, 10 game, 15 game packs. That's our, that's our sweet spot. So where is your, uh, Josh Schaub joining us? We're talking baseball, commissioner of the American Association of Professional Baseball. You can check out, um, you know, in Wisconsin, there's Lake Country, there is the Milwaukee Milkmen. Um, I, one thing that I one thing that I talk about with baseball a lot is it seems like I, okay, baseball is chess where everything else is checkers. Every other team sport, there's a goal here or a basket here or an end zone here. It's like you know, you go down the field, you go down the field, uh, you score, you can pick up a defense, whatever. Baseball's different. Obviously, you can't score on defense. The field is different. There's no time, you know, now, you know, at the pro level, adding pitch clocks and stuff. Mm -hmm. I feel like baseball is trying to almost make itself, and I'm talking at the professional level, so I'm, it's or MLB level. I'm, it's almost trying to conform into like the other sports where, I just want baseball. Baseball to me is there's 162 of these days. Your guys' yeah. season is how long? 100 games. 100 games. That I think is part of it. It's part of it. It's every day I know I have a, I have a game to watch. Every mm -hmm. day. It's the ebbs and flows. It's a battle of attrition. I don't want to, I don't want that part to be taken away, but it just seems like it is. Let, the strategy. Let me address that. Let me, let me just address that, the, the yeah. pitch clocks. So we have pitch clocks too. We adopted pitch clocks. We have the data from 2010. Our league started in 2006. 2010, we have the data of game times, right? 
And game times were 238 in 2010 and went up to 315 in 2022. So we know all the way back in the 70s with Major League Baseball, the games were 243, 238. Yeah. All we're doing is returning the game to what it once was versus changing the game and putting it in a box. So the game you grew up loving was about 238, 240, and it had a pace, right? It had a pace, yeah. which is why we love it. Every 12 seconds, I know there's action. In fact, I saw this at bat between Johnny Bench and Vita Blue. And I've never seen such rapid action between hitter and pitcher. Johnny Bench's foot never left the box. Vita Blue got the ball, took the single, go. And it was like this like consistent eight pitch at bat of like, dude. And that's what we loved. We got away from what we loved. And so Major League Baseball, Commissioner Manfred, who, you know, there's a lot of critics. I, I know being commissioner is not easy, but he's just returning the game to what we once loved. But he's forcing it. Right. He's forcing yeah. it back into the box of how it was played. And I, I agree with it. We implemented pitch clocks in 2023. It was almost seamless. College baseball's had pitch clocks for even longer. So the reality is this has been going on for a while in the baseball industry. Um, and the players seamlessly transitioned to it. I think fans have come to really enjoy it. And the added benefit is it's good for TV. I mean, that is the reality. Yeah. Oh, so. I like I just so I understand because then the counter argument is okay, if it's 245, yeah. and let's say I'm screaming that I want a 315 game, well, what do I want 30 minutes more of is what you would ask me. And I would say, I, my answer would be, well, I just wanted to, and you would say what you just said, but then also the 30 minutes more of what I would want yeah. is, is nothing. Interesting. It's, it's 30 minutes more of, you know, wrist, yeah. gloves, legs. Now, in the playoffs, I don't mind a little more drama and tension, but I do think like Valid. that 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 point that you make is like it was it didn't have to be in the past because it didn't have to be, and then as people got more like, is that I don't even know if it's a strategic thing. It just it is. I mean, it's for both hitters and pitchers strategic. So pitchers, it's rest right in between pitches and exertion. And agents start to do the math and teams start doing the math on the longer you take in between pitches, the better performance you're going to have. And for hitters, just time to think and digest because there has been no unencumbered at bats for hitters. Since kids now play, you know, travel baseball and whatnot, every at bat is encumbered. And what do I mean by that is we've drilled into their head. They need to analyze the hell out of every pitch, every yeah. at bat. We're talking about every at bat and every pitch. And how would you do that? Why'd you do that? And was your foot at a 30 degree angle and your hands back? And look at my background prior to becoming a commissioner was I was a scout for the Brewers, associate scout under Harvard Keene Jr. So I was old school baseball, right? And so you told a hitter what to do before I opened their bat. And I wanted them just to react. But what has happened is now we're breaking down film and we're breaking down film during the game in between every at bat. We're breaking down what the pitcher threw you. It's like, so hitters wanted to slow down the world because it was just too much to consume for them. And this game just grew on and fans like they want consistent action. That's what we're providing back to them with pitch clocks. Yeah. That's ultimately like, again, I mean, I'm adding 30 minutes of nothing. I guess I don't like that. It got to a point where it had to be a change, but you know, if it has to be a change, um, it has to be a change. Now you guys do work with the MLB as one of these partner leagues. What does that like mean? What, what, yep. what kind of benefits do you get? What kind of benefits might they get? Cause you know, ultimately and you see it with the USFL or the UFL now, it makes sense if everybody's kind of thinking about the same thing. Um, yeah. Unless, unless like a, you know, live golf, a version yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. but if that's not the case like uh i think the partner leagues can only be beneficial for everybody yeah i'll walk you through history a little bit so um former commissioner c league saw the independent leagues as we were once known as competition right so we're in major league markets and we're stealing tickets from the brewers the cubs the white Sox. we're in kansas city the monarchs are stealing tickets from the royals and Commissioner Manfred, when he came out in 2016, saw the world differently. And that is, we need really a one baseball model where we're actually not competing against each other. We're competing against other sports. We're invading our time in the summer. We're competing against electronics and video games and everything else. So how do we work together to grow the game of baseball? So really our relationship is centered around marketing. So they provide us marketing assets. The logo means a lot to us. And then just in general, their access to best practices, technology, winter meetings. We sit with all the affiliated teams and talk about vendors. We talk about promotions. We talk about all kinds of acting, uh, excuse me, marketing activations. 
In addition to that, umpires, right? We know in this country that we have a problem with officials, referees losing that side of all of our sports. How can we work together to build the umpire programs of both leagues and borrow from each other where our, our umpires can graduate to MLB and umpires that are stagnant there can come over to us and keep getting games. So they're developing this pool. Then there's the player side. The player side used to be, let's call it haphazard between all the partner leagues where we all had a different model and in one league, major league teams were negotiating with the individual teams and our model, they were negotiating with the league and then the player would be transferred over kind of like soccer and develop, you know, where players are moving from league to league and getting yeah. paid. It's a uniform model now with like a waiver wire. So our players enter essentially the system for Major League Baseball. They place a claim on the player. So that all became uniform, which was best for everybody. Players, agents, Major League teams. It wasn't like trying to figure out every year what the new rules are for each league. It's like, here's the protocols. Here's what's going to happen. Predictable for players. Predictable for us. It, it's been a great system. Um, so every year I meet with Major League Baseball at least twice in person. We have more frequent calls. Commissioner Manfred and I have met before. Um, it's in general, the MLB partner leagues are for the growth of baseball as an industry. And that's how we'd see it. How is it with, uh, you know, because again, there's all these leagues. There's a lot of baseball being played. There's a lot of people that want to keep playing baseball. Yeah. With umpires. I always say, and like, there's a lot of umpires that we get to know over time in Major League Baseball. I Is it because there's not a like crop to replace them? I mean... I feel like it's harder and harder um, to find maybe somebody that would want to, and then you got to develop them and get them in there. How is it finding and developing umpires, especially now when they're critiqued more than ever and everyone wants to replace them with robots? Uh, their job's getting harder and harder every year in terms of like the access fans have to their job performance. Imagine you and I like sharing our data and our metrics of our job to the world. And then you have the online platforms, which we encourage them not to look at, but they do. And just where yeah. you see the critics of major league umpires and, you know, the followers, we have that in the American association too. You know, our fans know who our umpires are. Many of our umpires have been around forever as well. And by forever, I mean, you know, five, 10, 12, 13 years that we have the same crew chiefs moving from city to city in a smaller league. So they know who those umpires are as well it is becoming more difficult to replace them and keep them around. I mean, their, their rate of burnout is increasing faster and faster. And just, I guess it's more of a conversation around general civility that people have with other people in our society, but it's more intense for umpires because no one holds back anymore. I mean, so that it is becoming more difficult and we need to do a better job um, basically of curating them and making sure that, they're okay every day going to work, just like you and I go to work. You know, how are things? How are you doing? And what can we do to support you? As now, opposed where, to just being a punching bag. Where are you guys verbally. with the with like the balls and strikes? Do we? Yeah. So we have TrackMan. Um, we are a big believer in old school baseball in the American Association. So we we I mentioned the pitch clocks, but we don't have any other adopted rules that Major League Baseball has done. We believe in giving you the game you grew up loving. As close to that model as possible, which is why I talked about pitch clocks didn't change our game and return to what it was. We don't have bigger bases. We don't have a ban on shift. We do have some pickoff rules um, because partially players want to play under the rules that they'll play with back in Major League Baseball or the rules from which they came. So that's one reason. Yeah. Um, but I forgot that, the shift was – I actually forgot the yeah. shift was banned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, wow. you know, we are the game you grew up loving. We haven't, as far as balls and strikes go, we have track man system like major league baseball now has Hawkeye and minor league system still has track man. We monitor the performance of our umpires is the challenge system in our future. I don't think anytime soon, to be honest, but we do use technology to grade out umpires and really look at things, but that's about as far as we've gone and as far as we'll go in the near future. Well, one of the things too, uh, with challenges, whether it's that system, it's also, there needs to be a good video component and you guys have been making strides in terms of how people can access these games. I mentioned it's easy to go to a game, but uh, not too long ago, I was just, I don't know, it might've been a Saturday night or whatever. And I'm looking at what is on and I see that the dock hounds are on my 24 here. Yeah. And I didn't realize that there was some sort of partnership, uh, but that is great. You know, cause if you get people in and they become fans, they're going to want to see the team that they can't see on the road, but also the yeah. games they can't make at home. So where are you guys? I know that the TV kind of presence is 
uh, expanding as uh, kind of as we talk here. Well, Bart, thanks for teeing me up. So aabaseball.tv is um, our platform where fans can access all of our games on demand if they want. That's aabaseball.tv+. Plus. We are the first professional league to actually allow any fan to, broad, uh, to access any live game for free, no matter where they're located. No blackouts, right? So you can be sitting in Milwaukee and watch a Milwaukee Milkman game for free. You can be in online. Iowa and not see – you don't get blocked half the league. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, we we have that access. Additionally to that, you mentioned the local broadcast with My24 and the Doc House. We have many of those same local broadcasts throughout our league. In addition to that, we have national broadcasts. So we just announced yesterday uh, through Sports Business Journal a deal with Fubo Sports Network to broadcast um, games with them. Those are national games, access to 155 million devices in the world to watch American Association Baseball. We also have a broadcast deal with Unbeat which is an emerging channel similar to Fubo Sports. And then we have deals with Gray Sports Media, who owns 119 television affiliates throughout the country, to broadcast in Des Moines, Iowa, Mankato, Topeka, Wichita, Arizona Statewide Network, Georgia, Nevada. So we've got an expansive reach now like we've never had. And I think before we came on air, it's, it's you know, could I have ever dreamed a league that five years ago could barely get out a game on the internet and is now on national distribution? No. But it shows the appetite of professional baseball where it's hard to access other leagues sometimes. Here we sit trying to give our games out for free, right? Come watch baseball because that's what we want. We want to grow the eyes around the American Association of what we do. So we're giving fans what they want. So that was a good stride, you know, five years ago to five years now. As a commissioner, it's I mean, you got to always be looking ahead. Uh, what are we at, 12 teams right now? Yep. Yep. What are we looking for in terms of growing the game? Maybe it's not team wise. Maybe it's just, you know, different things, but what are like, what are the, like, if you have long-term goals, what's on your whiteboard? Yeah. yeah 24 teams um, by 2030 is kind of what we've circled. And that's partially teams, maybe jumping leagues. It's also actually replicate replicating ballpark commons. So ballpark commons is now like the blueprint other cities are looking at to what they want. So they don't just want to issue general obligation bonds to build stadiums. Like that doesn't work. We, we know that doesn't work. What we want to do is create entertainment districts. So we've announced public projects in Waco, Texas, Jersey Village, uh, Texas, which is a Houston suburb, Clarksville, Tennessee, and Blaine, Minnesota, which is a suburb of Minneapolis. $3 billion worth of development centered around American Association stadiums and paid for by the incremental taxes that are generated by the private development around the stadium. So what that's done is unlock secondary and tertiary markets to actually build these stadiums, not on the backs of taxpayers, but on the backs of developers taking the risk. There's some risk by the city, but it's all how sure. they hedge it. Um, so that's really our future is building not only stadiums, but entertainment districts like ballpark commons throughout the country. In addition to that, we, we've started last year playing baseball champions leagues, first international tournament for teams. So our champion, play the champion of Mexico's major league, Colombia's major league and Cuba's major league. And we won. So our team went down and beat all those countries, champions, club cool. champions. Now that's expanding to add two more teams this year. It's also starting in Europe, starting in Asia. And then 2026, we all come together to play a champion world championship of professional teams. Um, and then maybe in the future that cycles up to play MLB in spring training or something along those lines. So that is really our path is it's building these entertainment districts, finding markets that have the population but maybe couldn't pull off a stadium on general obligation bonds, and then moving internationally, not unlike other high-level professional leagues. So as a commissioner, how often do you get to just, like, watch a baseball game without worrying about uh, <laughs> It's kind of like hitters, right? Is it an unencumbered game watching, or is yeah. it, like, you know, encumbered Can game you? watching? Uh, very rarely. Very rarely, <laughs> like, do I get to go and, like, sit in the stands and, like, not think about – you know, I watch a game a little differently because I, I look at it as a product. You know, how is this presented to fans? How, you know, how do our players present to fans? What technologies can we integrate? Um, that's always really critical. Now, Brewers games, I'm a Brewers fan. I live in Wisconsin, grew up in Wisconsin. I can sit down and watch that game. Yeah. But that's also like an education, too, about like what's our next step because I watch what they do and I watch what other sports do. So it's just, I, I don't know if I ever have an unencumbered really game watching experience. Um, one team that I, I don't, I see this. So there's this guy I used to do a lot of radio with in uh, Sioux Falls, John Gaskins. And he's yeah, like the yeah, entertainment yeah. guy for the Canary. Harry Canary, Harry yeah. Canary is, is like, yeah, mantra. 
Yeah, yeah but I, I saw him. I saw him the other day. He was Ron Burgundy. Um, yeah. But there's like that. That that is important. I think is the baseball product needs to be good. But then when there's not the baseball, like that product also needs to be good. And obviously, I, I see John's killing it in that department. Yeah. Um, you know, the milkmen I think have bovine. Yeah. Uh, as their mascot, so that that has to be like treated almost as equal to the game day experience. Yeah. And Doc Hounds have Louie. So, you know, the experience you'll get at Milkmen and Doc Hounds games is phenomenal. Like the, the family experience, the cheering, the interactions. In fact, they just did this promotion in Lake Country. yesterday. They gave away three uh, cruises, seven-day cruises, I think, wow. at their game. They've done it three times a season, and the place just went berserk. So it's like baseball is the lion's show of the circus. And then there's all the other acts that are happening at the circus around it. I think that's that's how I like to describe our leagues. But I will note, too. Major League Baseball, the highest level, people probably forget, but they didn't used to have Star Wars night and all these other promotional nights that are not. I end up taking my kid. I, whenever we go, it's like it's not. Well, we did the Sesame Street Day once for the Brewers. That was planned. Yeah, um, and we got an Elmo bobblehead that he thought was soft, so he broke it as soon as he got home. <laughs> but then we went to randomly a Star Wars night and then another night, and then I I say, well, you know, maybe we'll go to another game. He goes, oh, what night is it going to be? And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's not not every night. There's not, you know, not every night. Yoda's not walking around every night, dude. Yeah, but that's that, that, you know, that, non-MLB that, level, right? And they've yeah. adopted that. And so, yeah, yeah. They, impact, they have though. the Lions show and everything else. Everyone's playing the same game, trying to, like, get groups that are non-traditional baseball fans into our stadiums because everyone else is pulling on them, too. But I will just end this segment by saying the Milkmen – the Doc House did such a phenomenal job of entertaining our fans. So if you're not a baseball fan, trust me, there's plenty more for you to do at our games, where it's the kid zone, bovine, the mascots, the entertainment on field, the funny interludes. Like there's plenty to do at our games, including great food. Yeah, the food and drink uh, specials are usually pretty decent. Yeah. Also, if we can get out to those um, uh, games, I'm not sure Major League Baseball's figured out the all you can drink section yet. So we still got that on them for sure. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, they have not. Uh, <laughs> right. If they Especially did, it'd be like eight hundred dollars to show up and have it all you can drink <laughs> yeah. at Major League Baseball game. So all you can drink. Uh, you can't have a mortgage that month. <laughs> Your mortgage is the all you can drink ticket. So yeah. yeah. Well, dude, good to catch up with you. Thank uh, you for having I love, me. You know what's happening? The expansion, the TV, all that yeah. stuff, uh, and it only seems like it's going to get bigger. Appreciate it. Look forward. Thank you to everyone. Check it out, aabaseball.tv, to watch games for free, and then go check out Milk, Milkman or uh, Doc Hounds. All right. We'll see you. Thanks again. Thank you. Take care. Bye.